A red bag is something that happens when a mare goes to foal. Basically, the placenta detaches from the uterus too soon. And instead of seeing the amnion, which is the first thing you should see when a mare starts to foal, you see a bright red, velvety looking bag. That is the placenta. It is already detached from the uterus, and that foal is no longer getting the oxygen it needs. Um, hypoxia is a huge concern in that point. Unfortunately, the only thing you can do is break the bag, pull the foal. Um, it's an absolutely emergency situation and another reason why you have to be there when they fold. If a mare folds a red bag, and chances are that baby's gone when you get there to find it. Um, the only chance you have is to be there when she folds and to break the bag, pull the baby. Um, depending on how long they've been affected by that, you m might have a live baby, you might not have a live baby. Um, they could be severely oxygen deprived. Um, my facility, we're equipped to handle stuff like that. I have resuscitation equipment, I have oxygen. Uh, we're ready to try to support those babies and get them going. Depending on what the cause was, a red bag can be caused by uh, placentitis, which is an infection in the placenta, and that can go on for a long time. Um, Fecs toxicity, just stress, anything like that, all of those things will kind of depend how much of your baby's going to be affected when it's born. Um, if a mare has a red bag, chances are she might do it again. Um, if you have a mare that has a red bag, I would absolutely try to get it to a facility that has the equipment to save your baby, to try to save your baby the following year. Um, Can you tell us about recent mares? No, recent mares got to be recent mares for a reason. Um, they were the horses that nobody could do anything with. Um, they're basically um, cold through by whether or not their uterus is good enough to carry a baby, that type of thing. So some places you'll get really great recips from because they try to get the good-minded, the nice ones. Other places they get what they can. Um, so recips are always hard to handle. I do a lot, a lot of recips and they can be dangerous. They're the mares that didn't get the training, didn't get the attention, any of that early along. Um, so. As with any mare, when they foal, it can be dangerous, both during foaling because they're in pain, they're kind of flailing around. Um, even if they were your very best friend before, they hurt, they don't know what's going on. If you're in the way, it's dangerous. Um, after they foal, their job is to protect that baby. Um, whether they like you before, they didn't like you before, they're gonna wanna protect that baby. So if you try to get in there, they're gonna, they could be ratty, I mean, and they will get you. Um, so safety is a huge thing. Um, if I had a recip that I knew before she was falling, she was ratty, and it could be dangerous, I'd take her someplace who was experienced in handling a horse like that. Um, there's tricks, things we can do, ways to get around her, but the, base, the biggest thing is keeping yourself safe because they'll get you and they'll get you bad. Um, that's all you can do basically with a recip like that. Um, and usually they're worse right after they fall in the week, few weeks before, and then they'll, they'll kind of chill out and you can get around those babies a little bit easier and that type of thing. But it's their job. They're just doing what they're supposed to do, you know. Um, they're supposed to take care of their baby and they're supposed to look out for it at all costs. So. Sure, um, there's a couple of different kinds of facilities, you know, mostly you're going to see about big breeding farms where they fall out lots, and there's me who I'm small, I have just a few stalls, I do a few at a time for select people and that type of thing. Um, so, but facility wise, if you're going to send them off, you're going to, you know, you need to call them, talk to the person that's going to be doing your full outs, talk to the person that's going to be falling out, see if they have all that uh, oxygen, resuscitation equipment, that type of thing, and find out what their program is. You know, do they call you in the middle of the night? Will they let you know the next day? Can you come and see your baby? Um, some people want to be involved with it, and I let a few come here and there. If they're locals, I'll let them come and look over my shoulder and be involved. It's fun, um, that type of thing. If you're going to follow them at home, it's got to be safe for one. If you're going to fold them in the stall, you need to make sure um, your stall is safe. There's nothing your baby can get bumped, hooked on, things like that. Make sure it's big enough. I really like my 12 by 24s at least. Anything smaller than that gets kind of dangerous. 
for mares and babies and me. Um, again, the whole thing is about keeping everybody safe. It, me as well, you know, um, because it's a dangerous job whenever, whenever <laughs> and the adrenaline's running and everybody's uh, worked up. Um, but so I, I like a facility like that. You can pull them out in the pasture. If you're going to do that, you need to make sure your fences are safe. Um, the baby can't get under the fence, get separated from the mom, anything like that. But the same thing, you're going to have to be there when they fall if you want to help and um, possibly prevent the loss of your baby. Um, dogs, if you're going to fall them outside, dogs are a huge concern that people don't think about. Oh, my dog's really nice. He would never do anything. You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised what your dog will <laughs> get into when all of that's going down or the neighbor's dogs anything like that it's a huge concern so um you've got to be out there and that's pretty much a facility you know safe um i always ask what they feed can you bring your own feed things like that i let people bring the feed if they want to here big facilities probably aren't going to let you um just that kind of thing but i, I would try to talk to the person that's actually going to do the foaling um, and get a feel for them. Make sure you have a comfort level with them. I know it's hard to send off your special mare, um, but if you have that kind of, of friendship or comfort level with them, it's a little bit easier. So.